Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show presented by SeatGeek with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. Titans preparing for a Christmas Eve matchup against the Seattle Seahawks. Both teams coming off heart-stopping games. The Titans fall at home, of course, to Houston. And last night, Monday Night Football sees Drew Locke hook up with Jackson Smith in Jigba for a touchdown. Incredible catch at Seattle. Snaps their four-game losing streak, winning 20-17 to over the defending NFC champion Philadelphia Eagles. Some game. Yeah, they played really well in the second half. You know, give them credit. They, they got stops when they needed to. Um, and then being able to score there in a critical situation um, in the two-minute drill. Does it change anything for you with maybe Drew Locke as the starter and, and maybe Geno Smith is able to come back? I, I mean, I don't think so. I think the, the core concepts remain the same. You know, both are, are mobile, both will, will boot the football. They still like play action. And then again, you know, three great uh, receivers, uh, Kenneth Walker, um, Charbonneau. You know, I mean, they have um, – they, they, they're, they don't lack uh, for, for skill players. Speaking of quarterbacks, are you any bit optimistic about the health status of Will Levis at this point? Uh, we'll see how that goes throughout the week. I think it's uh, still a little bit early. Uh, I would say that if we played tomorrow that – that will probably wouldn't be out there, but uh, we'll see how things progress as we move forward in the week. Okay, let's look, take a look at the Mike Vrabel six-pack from Sunday's game. Six of the best plays for the Titans. And speaking of Will Levis, he does a great job here knowing that Houston's offside and taking a chance. Yeah, working the cadence, you know, third and ten. We don't want to be in third and ten, but again, they, they jump and we snap it. Uh, execute this situation. He takes a look at Peak for the flag, make sure he has one. You know, and gives gives Nick a, a chance to go up and make a play and survives the ground there as he goes down. I know they had looked at it and challenged it, but, um, you know, when you go to the ground, you have to be able to maintain possession. The ball can move. It just can't come off your body, and I think that's what happened here. Great catch by Nick Westbrook, Akine there. Good catch by Elijah Molden on our next play, but it's a little bit easier as the defense forces a takeaway in school. Yeah, as you look through here, um, you know, really good coverage to start. I think, uh, you know, forced the quarterback to kind of come backside here with the read and then, you know, guys in his face pushing the pocket, you know, getting our hands up and, and you know, he, I guess, just loses sight of the back and Elijah makes a great catch and does a great job getting into the end zone uh, for a defensive score. So. Getting those turnovers and being able to score and capitalize is, you know, going to just be critical. We had our hands on a couple other footballs, weren't able to, to, you know, come down with those. Both of Elijah Molden's career interceptions have been returned for touchdowns. Now taking a look at some run defense, excellent play here by a couple of Titans, in particular Roger McCurry. Is Devin Singletary trying to get it in the end Well, zone? looking to try to get on the edge there. Arden strings it out, gets two blockers, and makes the ball go lateral east and west. You can see there Arden gets one and gets another one, and now Gibby and, and Roger are able to, to, to fill. But good fit there from the, from the end zone copy. Um, critical that we force that ball in the red zone to go sideways. They're trying to get it downhill. Roger McCurry coming up taking on Laramie Tunsil. Showing what he's all about, huh? Yeah, Roger doesn't lack for uh, uh, aggressiveness or willingness. Good stuff right there. Let's take a look at some more good stuff from Danico Autry. The first of his two sacks getting him into double digits for the first time in his career. Yeah, and you see him, you know, kind of get up in the air. And, you know, we've got to be careful. You see the side swipe and, you know, him able to get back on the ground and, and make a great play. And, you know, a huge third down stop there. And, you know, we're going to start getting the football out again. When we hit the quarterback like this, we're going to continue to, to affect them and, and get, the, you know, get the football out. Our next play is a tremendous individual effort by Chris Moore on a throw in overtime. Will Levis gives him a chance to make a play, and he does. Yeah, you know, and it's uh, going up and making a play. I think we need a better decision. I think we're lucky there. But um, Chris has certainly come down with some big catches 
uh, this year and, and goes up over top and attacks the football. And, you know, it's just a great reminder that when the football is in the air, it has to be ours, and, and, and Chris does that. Chris Moore with a nice grab. And then a hustle play to wrap up the six-pack presented by SeatGeek. And it's Marlon Davidson called up from the practice court. Yeah, I mean, good coverage. And, you know, Marlon's been working hard. And, you know, I would say that he took advantage of his opportunities. And when the quarterback has to bring the football down, you know, we need somebody there. And Marlon was there, and he, he really played well and took advantage of his opportunities. Uh, and we'll see him more moving forward. How did you feel about Keandre Coburn and also well, Quentin Bohan? I, you know, I thought, you know, Keandre really factored a couple times into the middle of the pocket. We talked about, try, you know, that's the easiest way to affect play action pass. And, you know, Keandre was able to do that a couple times and probably got maybe held or tugged on the one. But, you know, a good start for him. And then, you know, probably need to get Q going a little bit here more. And, you know, I don't think he was, you know, you know just from certain things in the game and, you know, conditioning and everything else, but he'll, he'll be ready to go this week. All right. Titans make a couple of practice squad additions today as they bring back players who were with them earlier this season. James MP was here in the off season and at the first part of training camp, he's an offensive lineman, has experience from BYU. And then a familiar name to Titans fans, Jordan Ruse comes back. The team waved him back in September. Jordan Ruse has been a reliable guy for you for several years. Yeah, both those guys very familiar with our system. And, you know, we'll need, you know, probably some help here as we work through the, the last couple games and, and felt like having an interior O line and guys that can pull it and, and, and play multiple positions would help us. All right, we need to get a break. When we come back, it's time to head to the Vrabel's Trader and see some great design on a play that went to Traylon Burks that. Maybe got him jump started. Certainly did in the course of the ball game. That's coming up next on the Mike Vrabel Show from the Bet MGM Studio, presented by C. The Mike Vrabel Show in the Bet MGM Studio, presented by Seat Geek, and it was voted on as the best part of the Mike Vrabel Show. It's time for the Vrabel Strader. What do you got, Mike? You want right. to cue it up? I want to see this play because this was a thing of beauty. The, the play to Traylon Burks in the first quarter. You run the ball, and then you get right on the ball. It's, we do. We yeah, go so on the ball. So it's an interesting design. And, Take and so, through. again, the conversation goes about, you know, run, pass, this, that, and the other thing. And there's a lot of different ways, you know, to try to, you know, figure out what they're in defensively to get yourself in the best call. You know, this is a formation that we're in here a lot. You know, it's a balanced formation. It's two by two. You know, Derek's behind the quarterback. Uh, we can run, you know, multiple ways. You know, you can bring tight ends back. You can do different things. Or you can max protect. You can run, you know, different concepts. Um, and in this particular case, you know, we get the look we want, which is, you know, two high safeties, right? This is something that they've shown. Okay, coming into the game. So we get him in a too high look. You see that we're able to build a nice wall right here. Okay, Wesco does a nice job on the one-on-one. -on -one. We're break, we brought the tight end back. We brought um, Raider back in case he needs some help. But you can see the wall and our ability to build a pocket around the quarterback. And, you know, so again, using these concepts that we have to operate at the ball, you know, are, are really nice things. Traylon's running with speed. I think that's the biggest thing that you want to see here is I would say illegal contact, but you see Traylon running with speed and, and snapping this thing off. And even though they've got three guys back here, they're all running for the post and Traylon does a nice job uh, of wrapping it in here. And Will does a great job in allowing to run after the catch as well. But it starts with the, the operation of getting to the ball you know, making sure that we see everything that we want to see uh, from a quarterback. You know, protection is always critical. And so you can see the protection. We get a wall. The quarterbacks are able to move a little bit off the spot, change his launch angle. We do a good job here with the tight ends. Allows the quarterback to step up. And then good ball placement here out in front of trailing where he can catch and run through this thing for a few extra yards. I mean, that man's 230 pounds. He's running 21 miles an hour, so we're going to need to see more of that and try to continue to have that as a, as a weapon. You know, the play-action part of it is such an important thing in so many different facets, but it seems to me 
Will Levis is a good ball handler in that. Yeah. He, he takes the fake out very well. Derek sells it well. You know, and again, it, it is part of it. But, but the other part of it is allows us, you know, to do right. this. And, you know, these guys over here, these kitty cats are pretty good yeah. in this league. And they, and they go. And so the more that we can move and slide and get, show them different looks as opposed to just one-on-one -on -one pass rush, that's what I'm for. One week, we'll just have to do the whole show at the Brable Street. No, we won't. Okay. We'll go to break right now, and we will have the epic Western feature coming up next. I think Coach may like this. I hope so. We'll do this as much as you want. All right. We're back on the Bike Brable Show presented by Seat Geek right after this. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Brable Show presented by Seat Geek. Wide receiver Mason Kenzie first came to the Titans as an undrafted free agent following the 2020, 2020 NFL Draft. And for all but a short stint with the Patriots, he spent the last four seasons on the Titans practice squad. We wanted to tell you the story of Mason's relentless drive and his love for the game as a four-year practice squad member, and we hope we were able to do that. But last Friday when we spoke with Mason, there was a surprise that improved the story. Mason Kenzie is this week's Epic Western Spotlight. Here we go. Do any of your friends ever ask you after four years, why are you still doing this? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've, played in, I've played in four or five games in my career, so, but for me, it's more about just being able to play the game that I love. I love playing football. It's a dream that I've had since I was a little kid. Um, and I think a little bit of that excitement every week is not knowing when you're going to get called up, you know? Um, so every week is a new opportunity. And again, I get to play the sport that I love. I'm around a great group of guys and uh, I love my job. So I love coming to work every day. So that makes it easy. Bring some, go, bring go, some juice, go. let's go, let's go. Make some plays, make some plays, Ty Jack. Have there been moments where you've said it's time to go get a real job? Um, when I. When I left here after my rookie year, I went to New England for a little while. There was there was some doubt. Um, I was just in a new place, new area. Um, it was a lot different than what I was used to being in here for a camp. So I thought about it for half a second, but you know the like I said, I love playing ball, and I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else. Dude, I, my mind lives in a constant state of practice. You uh, you're wearing your number today. Mm -hmm. Most weeks you're wearing somebody else's number. You're an actor. Yeah. You're portraying one of the other team's best receivers. Who's been your favorite guy to portray in practice as you get the defense ready for a game? Um, I always joke around with the, the guys that run the scout team. I'm like, hey, put me in the jersey of the guy that gets the most what? targets. Because you know that's what makes playing receiver fun is catching Ooh. the ball. Um, so week to week it's different. Oh, I wouldn't say I have a favorite guy, but whoever gets a lot of targets always makes practice a little bit more fun. Do the defensive backs hate you? Oh, they know I'm gonna I'm gonna yep. try and make them work every day. Hey, um, right and here. I, I joke around with them, and you know we we give each other a hard time all the time. But that's you know that's what I'm here for. I'm here to make their job hard, so when it comes comes time to play on Sunday, it's easy. So I want to ask you about your interaction with DeAndre Hopkins. Mm -hmm. You spent a lot of time talking to D Hop. What's that like? Yeah, I mean he's a guy that's had a lot of success in this league. He's been a mentor for everybody in our in our room. And anytime you can pick a guy's brain like that um, is an opportunity to add something to your toolbox because he's seen everything. So he's been an awesome addition to our team, an awesome addition to our room, um, and I love working with him. So as we started to put together this feature idea, we didn't know that you were going to get called up this week. Yeah. But you are playing on Sunday against the Houston Texans. Mm -hmm. um, for you when these moments come, what does it feel like? Yeah, I mean, every opportunity I get to suit up is a blessing. Um, and I try and, like I said, take it game by game. But for me, every time I get to suit up, it's like the Super Bowl, you know, because I love to play football. That's what it's all about. I love to go out there and help the team any way that I can. So I'm super excited. I got like 14 tickets for the game on Sunday. So a lot of my family's going to be here. My girlfriend's family's going to be in town. So um, I'm super excited. Every day in this building is a blessing. Every day in this league is a blessing. Um, and not a lot of people get to do it. So. Um, I try and take it one day at a time, and uh, just remember I'm living out my dream every day. 25-year-old graduate of Berry College in Rome, Georgia. He was on a work study there, had to pay his own way through school at a very expensive and a very outstanding school, by the way. 
He's a guy who's very well liked all around Ascension St. Thomas. Yeah, not only liked, he's respected. You know what I mean? The guys respect him uh, for how hard he works and, and the grind and how he prepares and how he shows up every day to, to work. And, um, you know, he's got a great spirit about him, a great energy. You know, he's been great for us in practice. And every time we've asked him to, you know, to, to come up to the, to the roster, he's, he's fulfilled a role. And, uh, you know, we just, we, I like seeing Mason every day. Four punt returns for 17 yards against the Texans on Sunday. Not flashy stats, but man, he saved you a lot of field position yep. catching some punts. Yep, and and we knew that 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 Cam was going to be able to bang them, and there was going to be some short ones. And I know Mason, you know, would have liked to have been able to have that one that hit on the 20 that got down inside the four. But uh, he did get us. You know, he he was trying to field punts, and 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 we, you know, at the end there where we had the penalty. I thought that was another great example. Unfortunately, you know, he got it back inside the 50 and, you know, just things didn't work out from the penalty standpoint. Good job by Max Walsh on this week's Epic Western Spotlight about Mason Kenzie. When we come back, kids ask Coach Vrabel. Time for the tough questions to finally get asked on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by CP. Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Seat Geek, moves to the segment where kids ask Coach Vrabel. Better than you ask him. True. Always. Hi, Coach Vrabel. I'm Abigail, and, and I'm nine years old. My question is, what's your favorite sport and why? Straighten up! Abigail. Um, okay, outside of football, I would say watching Carter play Baseball is probably at the top of the list. Uh, me playing good golf would be at the top of the list. Um, and your dad was a basketball coach. Man, my dad was a basketball coach. I, I do enjoy um, basketball. I, I like, you know, I've gotten into Carter and I like watching MMA. You know, I think that's entertaining. Um, you know, we are, we watch a lot of sports, so. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's and anything we would turn. Jen is a big sports fan, too. Yeah, yep. Uh, we, we got them all covered. We got all the sports covered in, in, and, in the house. And so are you excited about Carter's baseball at Tennessee Tech? This I time? am. I am. It's, uh, it'll, be, it'll be fun to get over there and you know, see some weekend series uh, not too far away. Uh, new turf over there at uh, Cookville at the stadium. So excited about that. Matt Braga, very good coach. Yeah. Glad to have him back. Have him back. Yeah, I don't know if the other schools in the state are, but he's very good. We need a break, and then we're back to look at some Nissan keys to success to beating the Seattle Seahawks. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by CQ. Titans opponent, the Seattle Seahawks, coming to town for the first time in quite some time. Although we went there two years ago in the Titans with a thrilling comeback victory over the Seahawks, then quarterback Russell Wilson. This weekend, we think it's Geno Smith, but we don't quite know. It could be Drew Locke. It's time for Mike Vrabel's Nissan Keys to Success against the Seahawks, who come into this game 7-7 seven and seven on the season. Be great tacklers. Man, two, they've got some... Two great runners. Yeah. Two runners. There's Kenneth Walker now. He, he, he got some juice. Uh, breaks a lot of tackles. Uh, they've got good skill players. Good job by Aziz there coming underneath on the screen as they show that. But they've got, you know, DK Metcalf. Um, that tight ends are, are skilled. Vant. Yeah. yeah, and so we just we, – we have to be able to tackle if they get the ball in their hands, not give them extra yards uh, after the catch or, or in a run or, you know, a play extension. Yeah, they got a little bit of everything with Smith and Jigbo, with Lockett, who's a, a shifty kind of guy. Uh, some some tough guys, yep. certainly. All right, let's take a look at the second key to success, and that is stay efficient on the early downs offense. I mean, it's just uh, sometimes it's a broken record, and you can see the difference when we do and we're, we're able to complement and get into drives and, you know, just too many third and longs. And, uh, and so if we, can, if we can have some positive plays on, on first and second down and not beat ourselves, uh, I think we'll be, we'll be in a position to move the football. Do you think Tajay did a pretty good job the other day? Yeah, I mean, he continues to, to get better and improve. And, you know, could have been better, I think, in the pass protection uh, one time. But other than that, I, you know, I think he continues to, to be excited and help us. All right, final key, and it's special teams, uh, be sound on the coverage units and the punt protection. P. 
Pete Carroll likes to go after punters. There's no question about it. They do. And Dallas, their returner is strong. Excellent. Running back, strong runner. He's a dual returner. You know, he gets the punts. He goes north and south. He's tough to, to tackle. So it'll be a great challenge. Looking forward to Christmas. Absolutely. Yeah. Christmas Eve it? game at home? It's Monday. It's Monday. There you go. I know. you got to be warm. Happy out. holidays to everybody. Happy holidays. The day's running together right now probably. They do. But it's going to be fantastic. Christmas Eve game, noon at Nissan Stadium. Come see the Titans play. Listen to us on Titans Radio, 104.5 The Zone in Nashville and our many great Titans radio stations throughout the region. Titans and the Seahawks this Sunday. Merry Christmas, everybody, and thanks for joining us for the Mike Vrabel Show.